The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations, Rio Verde, on your new apparatus, job number 30359. Please utilize this reference number anytime you're referring for this apparatus for parts with Hughes Fire Equipment or Pierce Manufacturing. Let's get started on your apparatus. Located in the bumper, on each right and left side are electronic sirens. Just off mid-center are two air horns, an inch and a half discharge port, a hose tray in the center, and emergency lights on both right and left side located on the side of the bumper. Moving up from this location, you have the headlight cluster for high and low beams, turn indicator arrows, emergency lights just above that cluster, the compartment hood, and you have three windshield wipers across the front. Moving up further, you have a floodlight mounted in the center, an opticom, running lights, and at the very top, emergency lights. Looking on both the driver and passenger door, you have Rio Verde Fire District with your emblem located in the middle. Looking into the driver's side of the apparatus, on the lower left-hand side, there are diagnostic ports, a master battery switch, your ignition switch, start switch, and hazard lights. Looking at your dash cluster, on the left-hand side, there is the transmission temperature, oil pressure, the DEF level, and water temperature. Located in the center of the cluster is the speedometer and the tachometer. Located on the top and bottom in the grade area are the information display screens. Moving to the right hand side of the cluster, you have your fuel level gauge, voltage meter, front air, and rear air. On the driver's side, looking to his right hand side, there is a video display, the Allison transmission pad. Located above the Allison transmission pad is the climate control and a directional light. Also located on the driver's right hand side is the pump shift. There are two indicator lights also on the pump shift that are green, indicating OK to pump and pump engaged. Above that there is mirror controls and draw your attention to the warning plaque located just by the Allison transmission. Located above the driver's head are overhead switches. I'll get more into detail on these individually. There's also a reading light. There is a push on off white and red light and the electronic siren. Looking at the first panel, there is the emergency master, the roof light, a front warning and side warning. To the next cluster located just below that, is the lower rear warning, upper rear warning, high beam flash, and the opticom. Moving just to the right of that panel is the air horn, driver side flood, passenger side flood, and your load manager. To the lower section of this cluster, there is the front flood, driver side scene, passenger side scene, and rear scene. Looking from the front to the rear, there are two forward-facing quick SCBA mounts.
In the rear of the cab, there is also two rear-facing SCBA quick access seats in addition with a engine access door. Looking at the pump panel, there is the master intake in the upper left, master discharge. Down at the very bottom is the two and a half inch intake, and there are also folding steps on the right hand side. Moving further to the right upper corner, there is the water tank level, the throttle control, tank fill, tank to pump, in the foam system there is a foam tank level, the foam system activation, below that is the pump primer, and on the right hand side just below the levers is the pump shift. Up in the upper section, there are test pump test ports. There is an audible alarm that is adjustable, and there is pump access on the lower right-hand side, and take note of the information regarding your pump information for Watrous. There is a large diameter discharge valve, master stream valve, foam fill at the very bottom, and up at the right-hand or correction at the top of the screen you'll notice your pump test plaque. There is a two and a half inch discharge. There are two of those located stacked in addition with drain valves across the bottom and just under the large diameter intake. On the right hand side there is an engine cooler. This is the placard regarding your pump test plaque. It has the job number located and it has all of the GPM and PSI pressures. Looking at the pump panel, there is also panel lights, a driver's side scene light switch, passenger side scene light switch, driver's side flood, and passenger side flood. Looking at the top of the apparatus, there is a water tank fill location. There are two locking mechanisms for your master stream. Just on the upper section, on the cross lays, there are both inch and a half inch discharge ports. On a general view, there is an emergency light located in the upper corner. There is also the backboard storage at the very top. And at the very bottom, there is in the yellow, there is your shore power connection. There are a variety of different grab handles located throughout the apparatus. These are just some of them that are shown here. Looking just to the rear of the pump panel, there is the shore power outlet, the master electrical breaker box, and you have below that adjustable shelving channels. Also looking at the electrical breaker panel, there is bottle storage to the right and your DEF fuel. A closer view of the panel located is the master breaker. Just over the rear wheel, there is the rolling access to the center compartment. On the rear of the apparatus there is your diesel fill, adjustable shelves, moving to the side of the apparatus from the rear we can see two emergency lights at the very top and a floodlight in addition with your cluster for brake, turn, and backup. Further looking at the rear of the apparatus, there is an upper compartment storage, a backup camera, various folding steps, and ladder storage. The very top, there is the top compartment access, directional light, and an emergency light. A general view of the upper section of your hose bed. Also located on the hose bleg on the right hand side is a discharge port, and there's once again top compartment access. This is a general view of the ladder compartment storage area where your pike poles are storage, your folding ladder, your 14 foot straight and 24 foot extension. In the rear, there is a pull out shelf on ball bearing rollers and there are two folding steps. 
Looking at the side of your apparatus, a variety of emergency lights located in both locations, in addition with floodlights located at the very top. Also take note, there is bottle storage, a telescoping light on both right and left side of the apparatus, adjustable shelves, and a pullout shelf. Just over the right rear side of the apparatus rear tire, there is a tool board, emergency lights, and bottle storage. A closer view of the opening of that pullout. There's also adjustable shelves located just in front of the rear tire. Looking at the pump panel on the off side, we have the large diameter intake, a two and a half diameter intake, a large diameter discharge. There are two two and a half inch discharge ports on this side, in addition with pump access, and there are discharge drains located across the bottom and folding steps on the left hand side. Looking at the passenger side, we have the glove box, an air horn switch, 12 volt output, supplemental restraint system, SRS, and there is electrical panel access. Looking at the overhead section of the passenger seat, there is a future or storage location. There is the light controller, a reading light, and a white red push button light. Just over the passenger's head, there is an emergency master, a front flood, an opticom, and various future switches. Congratulations, Rio Verde, job number 30359.